Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food. And up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is. Swimming pools, movie stars. A Beverly Hillbilly. Mr. Drysdale. Oh, I guess he's still up at the Clampus. They've gone back to the hills, and the chief foolishly agreed to take care of the house, Jethro, and the critters. And the what? Critters. That's hill talk for animals. <laughs> oh, hello, chief. How's everything up the mansion? Mansion? <laughs> you mean menagerie? <laughs> this place makes the zoo look like a... <laughs> I just gave you a stack of pancakes, you glutton. <laughs> Sounds like Jethro. <laughs> no, that's the bear. You're cooking pancakes for the bear? I'm cooking pancakes for everybody. I figure that's one thing they'll all like. You see, with syrup... But... <laughs> Correction. One of them doesn't like pancakes. <laughs> Listen, Miss Hathaway, get me on a plane to the hills right away. I've got to bring the clappets back. Folks is commencing to gather for the fair. Yeah, yeah. Where's Ellie B? I don't know. Why? Well, he's having a cake baking contest for all the single girls, and the single fellas is going to judge. I gotta find Ellie B. But Jed, she's such a miserable cook. I know. I gotta make sure she don't enter. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Ellie. Done entered three contests already this morning. Was uh one of them cake baking? Oh no, sir, Paul. I entered that one yesterday. <laughs> oh, Ellie, honey, there's going to be lots of nice-looking young fellas in town for the fair. You don't want to spend the day in that hot kitchen baking a cake. <laughs> oh, I baked it last night when it was cool. All I got to do now is decorate. What other contest did you enter, Ellie Mae? Oh, basket weaving and post hole digging and barn raising. <laughs> Jed. What are we going to do about that cake? Well, that mother contest might help us. We could hide it in her basket, bury it in the post hole, and raise a barn over it. Jim, <laughs> <laughs> Bernard Bradshaw, I thought I'd run you out of town. Granny, uh, morning, Elberna. It's a mighty fetching outfit you're wearing. Thank you. I made this hat myself. Is that a hat? <laughs> I thought your hair was on fire. <laughs> Mr. Kellum. Yes, Mom? I'm looking for a suitable place to hold my daughter's wedding reception. Oh, yes, I am. Your daughter's getting married. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I understand your dining room might be available. Yes, ma'am, and it is a dandy. It'll accommodate 12 sitting at the table, or 20 if they each stand it. What you call Buffett done. <laughs> Now, we'll uh, talk about the decorations in the menu later, but I would like some white doves. Oh, they may be hard to find. Would you settle for roast turkey? <laughs> Mr. Jones, I meant live white doves to sit around billing and cooing. Oh, 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 well, if it's live birds you want, let me get you some purple martin. They not only bill and coo, but they'll keep down the bugs. <laughs> Hi, Miss Bradshaw. Ellie Mae. I dropped my cake on the kitchen table, and it busted into little pieces. That's a shame, Ellie. Well, I guess that'll keep you out of the cake baking contest. Oh, no, sir. The cake's fine. It's the table I gotta sweep up. <laughs> oh, sweet girl. Uh, too bad she's such an atrocious cook. Now, my daughter is a wizard in the kitchen. 
Uh, besides being divinely attractive. <laughs> Big mouth attractive. Why, that girl is so homely. If she dropped her handkerchief in a Boy Scout camp, she'd have to pick it up herself. <laughs> Victoria Rose is the belle of this county. Believe me, a lot of men are going to be miserable when she gets married. Really? How many men is she marrying? <laughs> oh, you little prune face. <laughs> Look who's calling me a prune face. Why, you got so many wrinkles, your face could hold a five-day rain. <laughs> Ladies, ladies, listen. I think your fair is about to begin, and y'all don't want to miss the opening square day. That's true. I think I'll stroll over to the pavilion. Too bad Ellie took the broom. You could ride. Oh. I'm not going to stay in here and be insulted. Well, if you'd rather go outside and be insulted, let's go. You oh. ain't going no place but upstairs. Uh oh, Dad, I want to watch the square dance. You can watch it from the porch up there. Now, scoop. But, Dad, I won't be able to see. Randy, you got eyes like a hawk. And a face to match. <laughs> oh, well, Randy, you're going to get yours. <laughs> Granny sure left to Terry and Dale Verna, don't she? Yep. Been going on for years. I keep hoping <laughs> Granny will quit, but she's a hard dog to keep under the porch. <laughs> Hi, doggies. Nobody calls a square dance like old L.D. Keller. Survival of the fittest. What do you mean? I'm looking after a bear, a mountain lion, a chimpanzee, and other assorted wild animals. They fight over the food. If I don't scare them, I don't eat. Well, that should certainly intimidate the fiercest species. Well, there's one a dozen phase. Oh, you've never heard such vicious snarling and growling. No other animal will go near the food until it's finished feeding. Is it? It's a Jephno, that's what it is. <laughs> Talk about king of the beast. Next to that kid, a lion's a pussycat. <laughs> Did you reach the Clampets back in the Oaks? Yes, I just spoke to Granny at the hotel back in Silver Dollar City. What's the news? Well, I have good news and bad news. Granny says they're not coming back. I'm going to stay there and get Ellie Mae a husband. And after she's married and settled down, the whole family might stay there. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, now let's hear the good news. That was it. <laughs> that was the good news? Wait till you hear the bad. Forget it. You couldn't possibly talk what you just said. Granny wants you to send them their $85 million. They did it. Did you ever see so many people in all your born days? I don't think I have, Shorty. I lost Ellie and Granny in the crowd. I declare everybody in the whole county is here. Must be at least two or three hundred people. Say, Shorty, <laughs> well, Ellie's gone. I'd like to uh, snatch that cake of hers and get shit of it. Oh, you're too late, Jed. She rolled that cake out of here half an hour ago. Rolled it out? Well, good for it in her size of a wagon, will you? <laughs> a 
Why in the world would you? Well, I got a big oven back there, and I uh, reckon maybe she figured to win on size alone. No, oh, Ellie's cakes. That thing must have weighed a ton. Well, it bowed the floor, my. <laughs> sure, pretty Jen. Decorated so fancy with her name wrote across the top, and I said, Ellie May Clamp. There goes any chance of denying who done it. <laughs> don't you worry, Jed. As pretty as Ellie is, there'll be some young fella bid on that cake. Just so you don't bite on it. <laughs> where Granny and Ellie went? Uh, I recollect Ellie saying she'd enter basket weaving. Maybe they's there. Is the most beautiful basket weaving I ever did see. Tell me, beautiful young stranger, are you married? No, ma'am. Don't tell me that a girl was your talent and the face and figure of an angel is single. Yes, ma'am. I can't believe it. Why, the single fellas around here must be weak-eyed. Will you weak-eyed single fellas come up front here where you can see? Would you ladies please step aside so the single fellas can get up here? Thank you, thank you. Now, tell me, beautiful blonde young single lady, where you from? Fine book. I was talking to this beautiful blonde young single lady that's weaving this basket. Where you from, darling? Beverly Hills, California. A movie star. I thought I seen a striking resemblance to Mary Pickford. <laughs> Tell me, beautiful, blonde, young, single lady, what's your name? Ellie Mae Clampett. And where are you staying? At the Silver Dollar City Hotel. <laughs> Did you hear that, you single fellas? This beautiful, blonde, young, unwed stranger is staying right here amidst you. Stranger? What are you trying to pull? Ho, ho, ho. You know very well that this girl is your brother. Come on, stranger. Let's get out of here. Land's sake. Look at that candle. Who is that lovely, talented girl? I don't know. Who are you, lovely, talented girl? My name is Ellie May. Well, Ellie May, you sure do make a fine candle. Well, thank you, May. I bet you nobody here has ever seen anything shaped as good as that. And the candle ain't bad, neither. I see you got a sense of humor. Yes, ma'am. You got a wife? Yes, ma'am. Well, step to the rear or you're going to get splashed with hot wax. No, I won't. You want to bet? <laughs> when did you learn to make candles, darling? When I was ten years old? Did you hear that? She's only been making candles for four years. Oh, I bet your husband is proud of you. Well, I ain't married. Did you hear that, folks? This beautiful, talented, teenage, candle-making love goddess ain't married. I bet you single men is astonished. Will you single men raise your hands and show your astonishment? <laughs> Let them single, astonished young men step forward. Beautiful, talented, teenage, candle-making love goddess, a few questions. What is your full name, child? It's Ellie Mae Clampett. Don't tell me you're the daughter of Jed Clampett. <laughs> yes, ma'am. The multi-millionaire. Yes, ma'am. The man who's gonna put all of his $85 million into his daughter's dowry. Well, I don't know. Did you say that, Paul? He ain't here, is he? Right behind you. <laughs> now, folks, it's easy to see why this girl is so beautiful. This is her handsome paw. <laughs> Not only handsome, he's the kindest, sweetest, most even-tempered, 
understanding, forgiving man that ever lived. No. Stop showing Ellie Mae around his fair like she was some kind of a pet hog. Hear that, Shorty? He called his own lovely daughter a hog. Granny. No wonder I have to work so hard to get the poor girl a husband. Granny, I'm just about of a mind to take you upstairs and lock you in your room till the fair is over. Oh, please, Jed. You wouldn't do that to poor old Chick Allen. Chick Allen? What's he got to do with it? Well, well, I promised to help him sell his mountain medicine. You know, like his yarbs and his roots and his berries and such. You did? And Chick depends on that for his living. And my professional endorsement would help him a lot. I'm a doctor, you know. I sure would like to see you help Chick Allen sell his medicine. Thank you. But do you promise that's all you'll sell? On my word of honor, as next to kin to the grandest, noblest human being that ever drawed a breath, Jed Clement. Well, uh... One of nature's noblemen, a walking saint, a legend in his own time. Granny, that's enough. Can I get my medical bag and mosey over to Chick's place? Okay. <laughs> Bless you, Jed. You're a prince among men. You know, Jed, you can't hardly blame Granny for wanting to get Ellie married to Hedy Elverna Bradshaw's daughter. She hadn't ought to made that bet with Elverna. Yeah, but she did. And if she loses, Elverna gets to kick her clean up Dewey Bald. That could be kind of humiliating. And painful. That's two miles uphill through rocks and brush. And Granny is a young woman. Fact is, she's kind of old and feeble. Gather around, folks. Gather around for the medicine show. Step right up here. Right up this way. Now, seated before you is the famous Indian Yarb Specialist. Chick Allen, a living testimonial to the health-given powers of his own potions and elixirs. Now, nobody knows how old this man is, but he has been gathering berries and roots and yarbs in these hills for hundreds of years. <laughs> now, you might think that a man this old couldn't budge out of that chair, but you are wrong. Chick is gonna give us a dance, accompanied on the fiddle by his grandson. Right this way, old timer. Get <laughs> your grandson up. That's a feller, that's it. All right. Mud. <laughs> How about another volunteer? How about you, lady? Me, ma'am? 
Yeah, step up here, stranger. <laughs> step right here. The magic mud trick, please. Now, I'm going to apply this magic mud to the face of... I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Why, this face can't be improved. Never in my 70 years of doctorate have I seen such a beautiful complexion as I see on the face of this magnificent creature. What is your name, magnificent creature? Ellie Mike Clampett? Well, congratulations, Mrs. Clampett. Well, it ain't Mrs. It's Miss. Did you rescue bachelors here that this beautiful, gorgeous young thing with the perfect features and figure to match ain't married? Oh, you're at it again. Folks, I'm Alberta Bradshaw. Bless you, madam. Another volunteer. And I want to tell you. And this will need all the help she can get. You know. <laughs> Hallmark Channel original movie, Annie's Point, an S.C. Johnson exclusive event with limited interruptions, premieres next Saturday at 9 on the Hallmark Channel. Night falls. Darkness closes in. A mystery unfolds. Hallmark Channel introduces a series of original movies. Kelly Martin as Mystery Woman. Joan Marquette as McBride and Leah Thompson as Jane Doe. The Hallmark Channel mystery movie, Fridays at 9. Welcome back now. Here. This has been a fair.